Hi, art fans. Today, let's review perspective, something we had been working on before school got out. As you remember, perspective drawing is a way of using rules in your drawing to add depth to a flat two-dimensional surface. You begin by drawing the horizon line or eye level line. It's the line where the sky meets the ground. Then you add the vanishing point. Beyond that point, your eyes can no longer see. Now here we have a box drawn above and below the horizon line. The lines go from the outside three corners of the boxes to that vanishing point. Here I made the lines more solid and it's time to add the sides and top to the box. First, we are going to take our ruler and line it up with the top edge of the box. Now it's important to make sure that we keep the line parallel as we move the ruler up and it's level and then we draw a line between the first two lines there. Yes, now we're going to go along the side, line our ruler up with the side edge of the box and we're going to move it back to where the lines intersect at the corner of the box and draw down. Now that that's complete, we can erase all those lines that go to the vanishing point. We no longer need them. So I'm just going to take my eraser here and get rid of them. Excellent. All right. Next, now we've completed a box that has a top, front, and sides. To draw above the horizon line, we extend our lines, corner lines to the vanishing point and we do the same thing. Vertical line stays vertical, and we connect. There we go. And we're gonna line our ruler up to the bottom of the box and slide it down, keeping it level to where it intersects and create the bottom of the box. Again, you can erase the lines that go to the vanishing point. We don't need them anymore. And now you have something, a box that is drawn above your eye level and you have one that is drawn below your eye level. And you see different portions of the boxes. Here's one directly at eye level on the horizon line. So we are going to draw those lines that extend from each outside corner, outside corner, to the vanishing point. Oops, I didn't quite hit the mark there. It's above, so I'm gonna redraw really quick. It does distort your box if you're not careful. Now I need the side of the box, so I'm going to take my ruler, slide it over as big as I want that box to be, and draw a very straight vertical line. The line inside from the horizon line can be erased because we don't have a glass box. It's a solid, and then erase all lines going to the vanishing point. I don't think I've used the word line so many times before. I hope I'm not being con confusing for you. And there you have it, above eye level, on the eye level, below the eye level. Okay, now that we've had a chance to review perspective and the rules, the strict rules of drawing the boxes, we're going to do a different type of project using perspective but loosening up on the rules just a little bit. Now this picture is going to be a cityscape of sorts and it is going to have the, be the viewpoint of being in a very crowded city, Chicago, New York, right in the heart of the downtown area, and standing on the sidewalk and looking directly up into the sky as far as you can see, and all of those tall buildings reaching towards the sky. So find your paper marked perspective and put your paper in the landscape position. Portrait, landscape. Now we're going to uh, forego doing a horizon line. All we need, as close to center as you can get it in this picture, is a vanishing point. I'm not gonna make it too dark because um, as long as I can see it when I'm drawing, that's all I need. I'm going to be erasing it later. All right, so let's begin drawing those tall buildings. Of course you need your ruler. And the very first step I've got it in the landscape position, so I'm going to draw a line that goes from the vanishing point to the bottom edge of the paper. There it is. 
I'm drawing really dark so you can see it. This is gonna be the side of my first building. How wide do I want that building to be? I'm gonna say about here, and I'm going to draw a second line. Now, all I'm going to do is put my ruler parallel to the bottom of the paper, decide how tall you want that building to be. The ruler is parallel to the bottom edge of the paper. Now I'm going to make sure that I keep a level parallel line and I'm gonna draw the top of the building. That's where the building ends. And so I'm going to erase the lines outside of the building that I don't need anymore. There's my first skyscraper. Picture yourself on the sidewalk looking straight up. I'm gonna go all the way around and I'm going to continue to draw more buildings. I'm gonna leave a space between building one and this next one. So I'm gonna draw from the vanishing point and I'm going to put edge of my building. I'm gonna come over here. How wide is this building gonna be? I'm gonna draw from the vanishing point to the edge of the paper. And then I'm going to, I'm going to keep this angle and I am going to end my building here. It's a little less tall than this building. Notice how my paper's on an angle when I draw the top edge of the building. You want the two lines in front of you to add the top, and then in front of you to add the top. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. No longer need this. Okay, now I'm going to draw my next building. And actually, what I'm gonna do is draw the side of this building. Start at the vanishing point and draw down to the edge. I kinda didn't draw too dark at the top because I don't want to have to erase all that. This should be a little so shorter and slant down, okay? Just free draw it, slant it downward. Now I have the front and the side of the building. These guys are about the same width. So when I turn my paper, yet again, I am going to draw a fatter building this time. Vanishing point to the edge of the paper, making sure you can see. I'm gonna draw lightly, then press really hard. I'm gonna make a fat building this time. This is a very important building, it is fat. From the vanishing point and heavy line. Then I'm going to keep the paper level in front of me and I'm going to draw where I want that building to end. How tall is it? There we go. Race the lines to the vanishing point. Now, that's pretty much all there is to it. We're going to go around this paper and turn it and every time we are going to draw lines that go from the vanishing point to the outside edge of the paper. Boom. As long as I have this lined up, I don't have to draw the whole thing. The important thing to remember is when you are drawing the top of the building, put the two lines right in front of you, turn your paper, and draw across. And that will always keep you on the right track. Got it? All right, so you're gonna design this street in New York that you're on looking straight up at all the magnificent skyscrapers. Um, before we go any further, I'm just gonna turn my paper this way. I'm gonna show you one more time how to do a side of a building. And all you do is go to the corner edge, draw a slanted line downward, and then to the vanishing point, and catch it here. Make sure you stay on that vanishing point and draw a straight line down. Now I have the front and side of this building. Around I go, building, 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 more, 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 until I complete the circle. And it's going to look something like this. There are my buildings. This is all sky. Now it's time to draw windows on these buildings. And I can hear you now going, oh, for Pete's sake, skyscrapers have tons of windows. You're right, so let's not make it too difficult. I uh, have some 
preliminary drawings here of windows, and this is a little upside down, but windows. So I'm gonna show you how to do windows. All right, we're gonna do it on this building right here. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna need the sides of my windows first, the side edges. And all of those lines for the side edges of your windows should go to the vanishing point. I'm just gonna draw one there. And then I'm gonna move over on this part of the building. Make sure your ruler is lined up to your vanishing point. I'm gonna move inside the building a little bit here. And that, that is where the sides of my windows will be. I'm gonna move this over a bit. Let me erase this. And here's why. I have about this much space between this, so I want about that much space on this side. So, putting it to the vanishing point, and there we go. A little better. All right. What am I doing? There's no eraser on that pencil. You can tell I'm flustered. Here we go. Boom. Now, I am going to draw the tops of those windows, and they are going to be parallel to this line here. And I'm going to draw one. Oops, where's the rest of that line? There it is. One. Then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna keep this ruler parallel as I slide down and I'm gonna draw the next window, top of it, bottom of it. And I can then erase the space between the two windows. See what I'm talking about? Side. These are big windows. Whoever works in this building has nice, nice natural light. Okay, lining my ruler to the bottom of the window. I'm going to slide down, draw a straight line for the top of the window, come down a little further, keeping this parallel. Don't change the angle. Slide it parallel and draw a line. So I've got three big windows here. And I could keep going off down the bottom of the page, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna stop with that. All right, so let's see how to draw these nice curvy windows. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to do two parallel lines for the sides of the windows going to the vanishing point here and here. Then I'm going to draw the curvy top on the first window. There's the curvy top, all right? To draw the bottom of the window, I have to capture the top of the building, line my ruler up, slide down, and draw the bottom. Now I'm going to erase a little space, and I'm going to draw another curvy top, right? Find the bottom of this window, line my ruler up, and slide it down carefully to create the bottom of this window. Boom. All right. Erase the lines between the windows. Yeah. Then I'm going to add a curvy top. As the windows become bigger to us, they come, become closer to us standing on the ground, they're going to look larger. All right. So now I'm going to slide down as far as I want. Did you see how I lined my ruler up here and slid it down to draw the bottom of the window? And I could just keep going probably two more times, but you get the idea. All right, so we have got our cityscape. We are looking up into the sky. You're going to add windows on these buildings and you can shade in some spots. Yep. All right, one last shot. I'm trying to think of a different style of window that I could show you, but let's review one more time. To the vanishing point, onto the building. How wide do you want the windows to be? There we go, vanishing point, don't lose that. Now for the top of the window, we're just gonna come in here and then I'm going to show you an easy way 
too to do this and that is line up with the building here at the top and come down and draw one window skip a space draw another top of the window here and the bottom slide down a little bit more draw the top of the window and the bottom and then all you do is erase the lines in between and I've added windows on this building okay the only thing you have to worry about with the windows is making sure that the edges the sides of the window that the lines go to the vanishing point the top and bottom of the window depend on the top of the building and that's what it takes to create your cityscape are you starting to get the depth the illusion here that we're creating on a flat piece of paper that we are looking up into the sky that's our point of view. All right, so let's take a look at how we're going to complete this picture. Stay tuned. Well, here I am. I've got a lot of things going on in this picture. Um, I did draw my buildings all the way around, which is what you probably have done by now. And you've added windows. I haven't finished all of my windows. But I'm going to show you a little bit about how I have done the painting. And I jumped the gun a little bit here. I started having fun with the buildings before I painted my sky. So the very first thing I want you to do is to create a wash by bringing a puddle into your blue and transferring it to the tray. Paint with the puddle and fill in your sky before you do the, the buildings. Now I got a big puddle here, so I am going to pinch out my brush Get it dry and suck up that puddle a little bit. There we go. And here's why. I'm using marker on the building and then painting with it. And if I bump it too much, see what happens? They bleed together. So don't be like me. What I want you to do is paint your buildings first. I kind of got excited about this and jumped ahead of the game. And then and Anywhere where the sky goes down in between your buildings, paint all the way down there. Now, you may want to have some clouds in the sky, as there are on any given day. So, to do that, as you're painting along, just kind of leave a little jaggedy white space here and there. And then you'll have your clouds. Just leave an opening or two. All right. In these tiny spots next to the building, I wouldn't worry about clouds, but you might want to do it up in the top and the very top most point. So once I get all of my sky painted, then I'm ready to go on with the building. So what I'm going to do is jump over to the building here that I have just started. And basically what I've done after I outlined everything with Sharpie, I used skinny Sharpie here, even the windows. I used markers in a variety of shades that remind me of building colors. This green's a little out there, but you can use bright colors if you want. It doesn't hurt. Um, I have two tones of brown. I have black, which will make a dark gray. These blues need to come out and any other shades of gray that you might have are great for the buildings and basically all you're going to do is outline the building then you're going to dip your brush into water just water and scrape and then you're going to rub that brush on the marker until it loosens up and becomes paint like and then you're going to fill in and paint your building I like to use a brush with a nice point on it. It's easier. You never use the right brush for the job. So small spaces require a small brush. And that's what I'm doing here. Now, once I get in here and I'm going up higher in the building, I don't need to add any more marker because I have plenty to paint with. And it should take me all the way up to the top of the building. I like this effect with the markers because your building looks shaded when you're finished and you hardly have to do any work. The dark edge where you colored really gives great shading, okay? Now, the other thing to do to make your windows look reflective 
is to put a shadow to the left. Nice fat line going up the window pane. And this sort of is what artists do. I see it a lot to show that the blue sky is reflecting in the window. So see how I just went on one side there? And taking my brush, cleaning it out because I just painted with brown, scraping, loosen up the marker till it becomes paint-like, and stretch it across. Now, I don't need this to be really blue, so I'm not going to worry about it being very very light because it is it just enough to make it look like windows that are reflected okay <clears throat> here's another example of two buildings with some windows and so I'm going to pick a color and I'm gonna go with a dark brown here and I'm gonna go along the side edge of the building and the top and what I can do is just do a small line under each window. That's what I did over here with the gray. Gray is another great color to show window panes, okay? Got my marking, that's all I really need. Then I'm gonna use my brush and I am going to loosen up the paint. Now I got way too much water here. So I'm gonna go over, pinch the water out of my brush and then with that dry brush, I'm gonna come and soak up the puddle. See how that works? Very nicely. Loosen up the marker and then paint with it. There we go. Great way to get the paint exactly where you want it. And just remember, if you get too much water, squeeze out your brush and suck it up. All right, and then go right down the side. That is just about enough paint for this building. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do my left side of each area. Now here's where you have to be careful. We've got wet brown on here. I've gotta clean my brush, really scrape it off. And I'm gonna be extra careful not to get into the brown with my blue. That's why your pointy brush is a, a helpful thing. All right, there's the blue sky reflected in the window panes. And little by little, you'd move around your work and complete your drawing. I'm gonna show you this last building. I wanna show you what black looks like. You can probably get a feel for it over here. It's a dark gray. And so I'm going to go up the side of this building. I'm kind of going outside of my lines a little bit. There. Yep, and then a tiny line under each one. One of the things I wanted you to notice throughout this is that we're not worried about drawing every single line with a ruler and just the buildings going to the vanishing point and the sides of the window, you can freehand the rest. You know enough about perspective now that you get the right direction with your line. And if you don't draw every line with a ruler, it actually looks better and more natural, more artsy. You're not architects, at least not yet. Okay, got a little brush, water, and here I go. I get the water in the marker until it loosens up and becomes paint-like, and then I paint with that puddle. All right, black is one of those colors that can really get out of hand, so you've gotta be careful. And this is a tiny building too, that doesn't help. All right, go down the side, fill it in. If you have some white spaces, you, you'll never hear me say this again, but if you have some white spaces in this case, it doesn't hurt. Makes it cool. All right. Little by little, my buildings will start getting filled in. The very last thing I would do with this is to take a blue marker and everywhere your um, sky touches the ground, and you've already painted. Let's add the markering down there. And then we're going to loosen it up and pull it up into the picture. We're kind of darkening the sky as it gets closer to the ground, okay? So this is a big, sharp contrast here. So I'm just going to get more water on my brush, scrape, scrape, scrape. And I am really going to push that darkness up higher. 
Doesn't hurt if it goes all the way up to the top. It won't certainly hurt to have a really vibrant sky. Though I'm pretty sure they don't have sky. This is a Wyoming sky we're painting here, right? Not a New York sky. But you see how the darkness is more towards the bottom of the page. Just kind of work on blending a little. It kind of adds depth there as well. So this is how you do it, people. I'm going to continue working on my cityscape. Um, hope you guys kind of get the feel of standing on the sidewalk looking up in a very crowded city. That's what we're shooting for here. And so as you finish these, be sure to share them on the portal. I hope you have fun kind of experimenting with more techniques and perspective. It's been fun working with you. Stay tuned for next week and have a good one.